As the calendar turns to December, we start to slowly but surely put the seal on 2017, and for a variety of reasons, in a variety of places, I say, thank God, Ugga, I'm ready for 2018, and whatever it might bring us. But as I do start to close that book on 2017 and open the first chapter of 2018, I start as a wrestling fan, a WWE fan, start to think ahead to the Royal Rumble in January. Because I know when the Royal Rumble starts, that's when the official road to WrestleMania, the WrestleMania season, really begins. And every year around this time, I really start to think about who could, who will, who should win the upcoming Royal Rumble. And this year is no different. So I came on here and I'm like, okay, let's talk about this. And not who can, who will, but who should win the 2018 Royal Rumble. I'm just going to rattle off some names here for a variety of reasons until we get to the one that I feel should win. I mean, you've got Finn Balor and you... <laughs> Unless the Royal Rumble winner gets a cruiserweight title shot on the WrestleMania pre-show, I'll pass, and so will Vince McMahon. You know what Finn Balor can get over? He can get over that damn top rope in quick order at the 2018 Royal Rumble and move the hell on and get out of the way. Next, Daniel Bryan. I mean, you want to talk about a nostalgia story, and hell, if they've cleared Kurt Angle with his neck issues, why can't Daniel Bryan? Yeah, they're not doing that crap. That would be the single dumbest thing the WWE could do. Because as soon as they would put Daniel Bryan in a Royal Rumble match, everybody would automatically galvanize behind him. And anybody winning other than Daniel Bryan would be a complete and total fart in church. Meaning it wouldn't get over just like Finn Balor. Except for Finn Balor getting over that top rope at the Royal Rumble. As he should. Yeah, Daniel <laughs> just did this again to mess with you. Uh, but on to the more serious names. Uh, you've got Shinsuke Nakamura. There's been a lot of talk about Shinsuke versus AJ happening at WrestleMania. And I think there's definitely a chance. I still think that could potentially be in the cards. Uh, and don't get me wrong, with Nakamura, having him win the Royal Rumble with AJ at this time of this recording is the WWE champion. There's a chance he could carry that belt to WrestleMania. You could take that match, which would have a lot of story through their history over the years. And throw the WWE title there because it's not like that belt is main eventing the show any damn ways. Um, so it could work. You know, Nakamura's character could definitely use something big and significant like winning the Royal Rumble. But I just don't see how you can go there. I don't think Nakamura is really over enough or significant enough, matters enough for him to win the Rumble. Furthermore... I think Nakamura Styles works better as that kind of traditional WrestleMania mid-card match, which is just two guys going at it, personal business, who's the better man. I think it fits better into that profile. Uh, you've got Braun Strowman. I mean, you could either A, send him at Brock Lesnar, which would require a massive change of plans, which the WWE is not going to do unless their hand is forced. Um, or if you decided you really wanted to launch Braun off as a full-on babyface and you wanted to split him off from Raw and send him to SmackDown where they might be able to use him even better, um, then you could entertain the thought with a Jinder Mahal being the champion heading into WrestleMania, especially if you're going to do some type of major quick squash. It, the dynamics would absolutely work with Braun. And especially with the Singh brothers there, they could really feed into that very well. Uh, but they're, they're not going there. Um, Samoa Joe, you know, talking about a guy who's had some moments. But he could he could use something to take him to another level. And a Royal Rumble win will most certainly get him there. Um, I, I don't know that I'm buying a former TNA guy winning the Royal Rumble, though. Uh, but the dynamics, if you wanted to turn him babyface, you could send him to Jinder Mahal. And again, another opponent opponent that would classify for a squash job on gender um, or AJ Styles and then you've got all that TNA history from all those years the ROH history and you know just wrestling history in general over the years so it's a natural story that kind of tells itself uh, but I don't think he should win and I most certainly think he won't win 
Uh, you could maybe argue for a Bobby Roode, you know, especially if Jinder Mahal or AJ Styles is a WWE champ heading into WrestleMania. The dynamics work in two different ways. But I don't know if the gimmick he has is really a world champ type of gimmick. Uh, and even though with a Bobby Roode, I'd like to see him in that spot at that point, and he's already 40 years of age, so it's better to hurry up than never. Um, I, I just don't see it happening. I don't think it would necessarily be the right move, and he's in a mid-card spot right now, and that's probably where he's going to stay through Mania season. Um, I could definitely make an argument for The Miz, especially if you decided you want to flip him to SmackDown. I think The Miz and AJ Styles could have tremendous chemistry similar to The Miz and Daniel Bryan, and it would still allow The Miz to stay somewhat heel and keep some type of an edge to him, which is where he's always best. And having a Miz win, especially if the realization set in that it wasn't somebody else winning, might go over very, very well. And I don't care what anybody says, compared to most of the rest of that locker room and that roster, you could make a very strong case that the Miz would be a quality Royal Rumble winner, especially with having Dallas and Axel as part of his Miz tourage there. I think it works. It could also work if you wanted to turn him babyface and send him at Jinder Mahal. It just works. You know, now I start to get into the serious business of guys that I think should potentially win, and The Miz is one of them. The next one is Matt Hardy, especially if you're going with this Awoken or Broken or whatever the hell type of gimmick you're going to talk about here. But Matt Hardy presents a unique circumstance and situation in the sense of this is a guy that is well-known and well-respected and well-liked by the WWE fan base. He's been around for years and years and years, two-plus decades. He goes back to the attitude era of the company, but the one thing he's never done in WWE with all the stuff he's done, all the great things he's been a part of, all the things him and his brother Jeff have accomplished, the one thing Matt Hardy's never done is been WWE champion or world champion in WWE as a singles competitor. So when you think about it, those are the type of stories that could be tremendous to sell at WrestleMania time, the type of stories that are easy to tell, that get a tremendous amount of buy-in. You've got Matt Hardy, all of these years, all these things he's done, and the one thing he's never done is hold a world championship in WWE. The story really tells itself, especially with the Jinder Mahal as the champion. I mean, you go into the match and there's no doubt who you're going to probably be behind. And, you know, it's just one of those things like, you could sell it as a Matt Hardy wants one chance at it. He wants that opportunity, and he feels like he's never really fully gotten that opportunity. He's always been in Jeff's shadows, and da 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 I think Matt Hardy, as a Royal Rumble winner this year, works. I think it really, really works. But it's probably not who they should go with, but I think they could go with, and it could be very effective. I, I, I'll be honest with you, <clears throat> I don't even know why I bothered doing this video to a degree, because we all know who should win the Royal Rumble, because we all know this is the guy that will win the Royal Rumble unless something dramatically changes, and that is Roman Reigns. And it, it's just, when you think about everything revolving around the Royal Rumble, 2014, Roman Reigns eliminated, what, 12 people, and he lasted to the final two until Batista eliminated him. 2015, he wins the Royal Rumble. 2016, he's the champion heading into the Royal Rumble. He puts the belt on the line, and Triple H, God himself, because it's ultimately at this time of year about God's WrestleMania match, he wins the title by last eliminating Dean Ambrose. But Roman Reigns was part of the picture. And then, you know, you look at last year, it was Randy Orton that last eliminated Roman Reigns. So it's like, the last four Royal Rumbles, a major part of the story has all revolved around Roman Reigns. And now we get to 2018, and it's potentially the fifth straight year that this is going to happen. And Jesus Christ, how much more can you put behind a guy? How much more can you throw him out there? And at what point in time do you wonder if you're really getting the return on the investment that you were sinking into this guy? And at what point in time does it become a sunken cost? And it is just ridiculous to me at this point. Now you've thrown the IC title around him because you wanted to make him a Grand Slam champion. Now you entertain the thought of taking your IC champion, throwing him into this match, potentially having him win the Royal Rumble, heading into WrestleMania to face against 
face off against Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship, champion versus champion, which is a possibility, and also as the Royal Rumble winner. And it's just insane. All to get to a point that we know where the company is going. Do we need the Royal Rumble match to really truly get there? Do we have to have Roman Reigns win the Royal Rumble in order for him to face Brock Lesnar? And my concern right now is from the WWE standpoint, that's an absolute yes, because they've been doing all this with Brock and building him up and nobody beats him and nobody kicks out of his 1F5. They feel like on the other side, they got to build this other super force up in Roman Reigns so that way the people really get behind the match at WrestleMania when they're going to kind of be 50-50 split on it any damn ways. But based off of this company and what they want to do, the guy that should win the 2018 Royal Rumble is Roman Reigns. And it feels massively predictable incredibly lame and a really sunken usage of the Royal Rumble match and the Royal Rumble winner's spot. And that's why I feel like there is an alternative. There is another option. We might even call this, to borrow from Austin Aries, option C. There is a bigger option, a better option, a brighter option. A breakfast club option. Ladies and gentlemen, the person who really, truly should win the 2018 Royal Rumble is, drumroll please, burr, 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 John Cena. I never thought I would be in this position. I never thought I would say this. But on everything from the three books of God, on the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, if there was any time ever in the rest of the history of WWE, if there was ever a moment in time for breakfast club politics and breakfast club business to rule the day, if it wasn't God's business at Survivor Series 2017, it is going to be at this match, the Royal Rumble 2018. John Cena is the call. John Cena is the option. He has to be. With that Ferdinand movie coming out, with him filming the Transformers uh, spin-off movie, Cena's buzz out there in the mainstream is probably as high as it ever has been. Doing the pistachio commercials as the elephant, doing the hefty, hefty, hefty commercials and all of this. The point is now, is at the end of his run in WWE, Cena has been more popular in the mainstream than he ever was when the company was pounding him down your throat for over a decade. It's funny, they finally got Cena over with the mainstream at the end of his WWE time. But at this moment, you don't need Roman Reigns to win this Royal Rumble. In fact, I believe the dynamics work better if he doesn't because you could sit there and have him eliminate uh, Braun Strowman or Samoa Joe and you could do some type of triple threat match between the three of them at the pay-per-view before WrestleMania to determine who faces off against Brock Lesnar. There you've got a big main event for a filler pay-per-view, your last one before WrestleMania, and you could have Roman win there and you've still got your match set up all the while with Cena being a free agent and he could go to either show, you could potentially tease Cena going off to face Lesnar, but you know that's not where they're going. But you could have Cena challenge AJ Styles one more time with some of the matches that they've had. Or even better, you can have him challenge Jinder Mahal. And we know the WWE loves to do this country versus country clap like it's the 1950s through 80s. But honestly, you know this company deep down wants to give him that 17th world title win. And you know they want to have this big moment for Cena because last year they did the whole thing with Cena and Nikki Bella taking on The Miz and Maurice and it wasn't even about the match, it was about Cena's proposal to Nikki. This company loves to give Cena big spots and big moments. And I can't see how they wouldn't do it again. And when you think about it, now you take the Royal Rumble winner, you put him on SmackDown. Now you have the Royal Rumble winner who has chosen to go after your champion if it's, let's say, Jinder Mahal. That makes Jinder Mahal more relevant. It makes him more important. And we really haven't done Cena versus Jinder Mahal in a title program at this point. It is the direction. It is the path. It is the way the WWE must go. 
I almost want to start a hashtag, hashtag save us Cena. And I can't believe I've ever gotten to this point. But it is so clear as day to me that if Roman Reigns wins the Royal Rumble, it will be shit again. And isn't it in Philadelphia? Remember the last time he won the Royal Rumble, how well that went over? They booed the freaking rock. The rock! The rock! But at least with Cena, people have toned down a little bit, and they've cooled off a little bit, and they don't hate him as much. Or the ones that hate him, like me, just aren't as prevalent anymore. But even I can acknowledge that he is the choice, that he is the better option. This is all about the Breakfast Club, baby. And as we head into WrestleMania season, I feel like everything sets up better for Roman Reigns not to win the Royal Rumble and yet still go on to face Brock Lesnar at freaking WrestleMania. Because imagine if Roman Reigns, instead of just winning the Rumble, he had to go through Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe, let's say, in the same match at the pay-per-view before WrestleMania to get his shot. It gives you a more natural, triple threat, exciting type of main event match for that filler pay-per-view that you need. Otherwise, you have Roman Reigns facing somebody else, and it may matter, but it may not. And I understand that they feel like, oh, we can't have Roman Reigns lose here. We can't have him lose this Rumble match, because then that makes him look bad bullshit. You've done so much to force him down everybody's throat, nobody's going to bat a freaking eye. And if anything, they'll like the fact that you didn't sit there and sink the Royal Rumble victory into him too when he already put the IC title on him and made him a Grand Slam champion and all this other crap. Cena is the call. Cena is the choice. Cena is the best, better option, much better choice at this moment because you don't know going forward if you will be able to get this out of Cena anymore. You don't know what the future may hold. 2018 may be his last year working in any real major capacity for WWE on any type of consistent basis whatsoever. And yes, it would be another Royal Rumble victory for John Cena. And yes, it would be another world title match for Cena at WrestleMania. But if it means Roman Reigns not winning the Royal Rumble, if it means keeping the product a little bit more interesting on the path to WrestleMania, then I'll just have to plug my nose, eat this shit, and like the taste of it. John Cena, John Cena, Breakfast Club Rules, bitches, John Cena, John China, it doesn't matter. John Cena should win the 2018 Royal Rumble.